The Word of God has to be handled as the treasure that it is. Mm -hmm. It has to be handled with the weight yeah. and the um, seriousness For sure. yeah. that it it is. Mm -hmm. It's the Word of God. Right, right. So to what standard am I held if I say God said mm -hmm. when God hasn't? Yeah. Hello, and welcome back to Now That'll Preach. My name is Jared Crowley. I'm your host. I'm sitting across from Pastor David Freck. And uh, if you are not familiar with that, That'll Preach, uh, basically the concept is we take your questions, your topics, your comments, and uh, we throw them at this guy for a little five, ten minute sermonette. Lay it uh, down. Pick it up. Right. On the spot. No prep whatsoever. No prep, no prep preaching. <laughs> And um, so, yeah, and if you guys like this kind of content, uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all the normal things. Yeah, and keep the questions uh, coming, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 we're always looking for new ones. So, yeah, if we haven't gotten to yours. Don't worry. We have a lot. We'll get to yours. But. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, this week is another topic, okay. uh, not a question. So um, I would love for you to preach a little sermonette on false prophets. A little sermon in on false prophets. Um, I believe it's Ezekiel. I want to. I can't think of the specific chapter, and it, yeah, it's Ezekiel pronouncing woes, okay. um, and and woes are God's declaration of. Uh, you could say you could say like curse, cursed be, sure, or sure. but this idea is, uh, you know, bad things are going to happen because hmm. you know. Okay. Uh, woe, woe be to, and he condemns uh, three groups of people. He condemns the princes, the priests, and the prophets. Okay. And when he gets to the prophets and condemning the prophets, he condemns them for prophesying uh, falsehoods, mm. for uh, speaking untruths, yeah. for building uh, expectations that were not were not manufactured or created by the Spirit of God sure. or through the promise of God. Right, right. So uh, there's a lot in the Old Testament, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, much of the Old Testament is really based on the prophets. Yeah, it's based definitely. on, you know, their prophetic declarations. We think of these hallmark prophets like Isaiah, yeah. Ezekiel, right. Jeremiah, Daniel. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them were cross-contemporary prophets. Samuel was considered a prophet. He was also considered a judge. Okay. He was also considered a priest. Okay. So he had this, this multiplicity of sure, roles and responsibilities. Sure. Um, so false prophets in the modern day, in mm -hmm. the New Testament context, uh, carries a little different nuance mm -hmm. and a little different weight. Um, but I would say that they still function the basic uh, condemnation of the old false prophets. Okay. So uh, a false prophet would be somebody that whose whole desire, and the Bible talks about how people want to assume to themselves teachers having itching ears. In other words, it's people that are communicating the word of God and they're saying, I wonder what they, what do you want to hear? What do you want to hear? What do you want to oh, hear? Gotcha. So it's yeah, this yeah. idea of uh, they're trying to um, coddle yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and engage you in a way that's going to, maybe reciprocate sure. a response that could benefit them. Gotcha. Uh, godliness is a means of gain. Right, right. So that's an fa attitude or the spirit of a pro false mm. prophet. Uh, the idea of manufacturing words. Mm -hmm. So you could be a false prophet. There's two kinds of false prophets. There's what I would call intentional false pro prophets, and there's what I would call unintentional sure. false yeah, prophets. Right. So I'm a little bit more gracious with the unintentional. For sure. yeah. In other words, they're motivated for the right reasons, mm -hmm. but they're manufacturing words out of emotion right, right. and not out of the grace that the Holy Spirit provides. For sure. right. um, I understand where they come from, but if they stay there and they play there, they're going to end up yeah. in a bad place. For sure. Yeah. Um, the Word of God has to be handled as the treasure that it is. Mm -hmm. It has to be handled with the weight yeah. and the um, seriousness For sure. yeah. that it, 
it is. Mm -hmm. It's the word of God. Right, right. So to what standard am I held if I say God said mm -hmm. when God hasn't? Yeah, right. Imagine the level of spiritual manipulation that can happen yeah. if I'm saying God said when God hasn't said. For sure. And if you regard the word of the Lord, mm -hmm. if that carries real weight with you, right. a false prophet is incredibly dangerous. Mm -hmm. Incredibly dangerous. For sure, yeah. So there's a couple ways to identify false prophets. Um, first, look at the fruit of their prophetic gift. Definitely, yeah. What's the fruit of it? Right. Um, and when I say the fruit, they has the words that they've shared come right. to pass. Yeah, yeah. I'll give it an honest period of time. Mm -hmm. If it hasn't come to pass, and they seem to have a track record of that, yeah. they have these grand, remarkable <laughs> prophetic utterances, but yeah. they rarely come to pass. Right. Yeah. Uh, probably not. Yeah. And this, this just doesn't trust, translate to personal prophetic words. This also translates to preachers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that right. are preaching right. false truths. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what, is there anything, such thing as a false truth? <laughs> uh, oxymoron there. Yeah, but right. is there any, you know, falsities and manipulating yeah. and distorting the word of God right. for the sake of Their an agenda yeah. right. that they're trying to put forward? Definitely. Yeah. So th that's the first one, the fruit of the tree. The second way you identify it is, does the weight of what they say, is can it be substantiated through the scriptures? Mm -hmm. So a everything that any person would say has to agree with this. Definitely, yeah. It has to. Right. So if somebody's prophesying something and it's not in mm -hmm. agreement with this, yeah. it's false. Yeah, right. It's, it, this right. is the standard. This has been proven yeah. through millennia. Yeah. Right? Heaven and earth are going to pass away. This isn't. Yeah, definitely. So, so this is critical mm -hmm. that I have to measure it against the word of God. And if it's inaccurate or doesn't uh, follow not just specific scripture, but the patterns and principles of the yeah, scripture, yeah. then I, I, can't, I, I can't regard right, it. Right, right. Um, so, so those two elements are critical. Mm -hmm. The third element is what I would call character. Okay. Uh, biblical character. Sure. Now you can have godly character and not have a prophetic gift. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you have a prophetic gift and godly character, that's the best of both worlds. Yeah, definitely. And so you want people that that walk in humility, mm -hmm. walk in integrity, sure. uh, walk in honor, mm -hmm. uh, respect, love. Yeah. If they're motivated by wrath and anger. Yeah. Probably not the Lord. For sure. Um, the Bible gives us in, in 1 Corinthians 14 kind of a standard for prophecy. It's for exhortation, edification, and comfort. Mm. So um, kind of the directed prophetic words, the condemning prophetic words, it doesn't mean that, that those can't exist. Yeah. Uh, but it seems like the New Testament guide is edification, exhortation, and comfort. Mm. So if it doesn't carry those elements. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, might not be there for sure. Yeah. Um, no, I think that's huge because, like, I mean, like you said, there's still like a condemning, you know, prophecy that can come or a convicting like prophecy that can come. Mm -hmm. But I was just talking with a friend about this the other day because, like, every time I've been like actually convicted, there's a comfort behind it. Right, conviction brings it, you to comfort. Right, it brings right. you to peace. Yeah. Right, because you confront the thing. That you know is askew. For sure. And, and God's and saying, see a better path God's and, yeah. bringing you back. Yeah. Yeah. Right, whereas condemnation pushes you right. away. Right. Conviction draws you near. For sure. Condemnation pushes you away. Yeah. So, uh, absolutely, uh, prophetic words will have conviction in them. Right, right. And there's, it's completely appropriate yeah. for yeah. them to have conviction right. in them because a part of the real prophetic people see things from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. That's their natural bend. For sure. And they're not as motivated by your perspective yeah, or definitely. my perspective right. or people's right. perspective or the world's perspective. They only care about really God's perspective. For sure. Now that can make them seem a little, a little wild callous. hair, yeah. a little out on the edge, so <laughs> right, on and so forth. Right. But that's why the character piece is so critical because mm. some people get a false sense of righteousness about mm. it. And they see them, they, they begin to build themselves up that they're the only ones that are right yeah, yeah. and everybody else is wrong. Yeah. And that's not a good place For either. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. once again, balance the word of God, um, 
you know, the godly character. Uh, all of these things are super critical. Definitely. In yeah. in defining false prophets, mm -hmm. and and the Bible tells us that we're you know in the Old Testament the answer to a false prophet was to stone him to death. We don't do that anymore, <laughs> but uh, the Bible says that we're we're to we're to run from them. We're to mm. flee from them. We're not to engage or glean mm. or gather from them yeah. because a little leaven will leaven the whole lump, so right, to speak. Right. So you really do need to uh, uh, measure their fruit, mm -hmm. understand their character, and does it line up with the Word of God. Yeah, yeah. And these are three ways you can constantly be assured that, okay, I can, I can receive what's coming. Sure. As sure. opposed to, ooh, there's a few things here that ain't lining yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, right. And right. so if it doesn't line up, if it doesn't bring a confirming thing to your spirit, mm -hmm. just shelve it or throw it out. Gotcha. And, yeah. uh, and uh, that's, uh, that, that would be my advice. But yeah. are there false prophets today? For sure. You know it. Yeah. <laughs> you know it. Yeah. Absolutely there are. And having said that, there are true ones. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. Um, the problem is, we tend to go with the flash and the glitz and the gift and, and we don't always mm -hmm. uh, hear uh, the rock solid grace that comes mm -hmm. from a true prophetic voice in our generation yeah, and, for sure. and they, they seem to be fewer and farther between yeah but, for sure but they're there they're yeah, out there absolutely. for sure yeah yeah and i value them they're they're an important gift for the edific edifying of the body of christ for sure. apostles yeah, yeah. prophets evangelists pastors teachers we right. need them right. we need that gift we need that thing that kind of pushes the edge yep yeah really brings us into account yeah. for god's perspective um whereas the pastor would kind of balance that with grace and right mercy right. and compassion yeah. the prophet's like yeah. you know get your act together right right, right, right. so yeah. Uh, yeah. we need both of those influences for us to become a perfected mature yep. body yep. Definitely. as it relates to the whole church. So. Yeah. I know I'm probably talking. No, you're long, okay, man. It's all good stuff. It's a great yeah. subject. It's a great subject. I think it's an appropriate subject for this season Absolutely. that we're in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, it's hard to ferret through a lot of the stuff because, yeah. you know, false prophets are really skillful with the scriptures. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So if you they don't know be, the scriptures, like, yeah, right. right, if you don't know the scriptures, right. the possibility of even the elect being deceived for is... Sure. is probable yep, yep so you have yeah. to know the scriptures yeah. and is it witnessing to your spirit mm -hmm. that matters yeah for sure that for matters sure. Yeah. you know yeah so and mouth of two or three witnesses yep you know, yeah every word's established yeah so is is this the only person saying this right right or has god brought confirmation from other respected sure. trusted voices right right yeah that's huge too mm -hmm. yeah yeah absolutely all right man there you go. Stay Appreciate away from the it. bad guys. Yeah, 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 for sure. Eat the meat, spit out the bones, get in your word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, man. Amen. All right. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you guys. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Um, and yeah, we'll see you next week. That'll we'll preach. see you next week. Keep preaching. Yes. Keep sharing Jesus with people. <laughs>